All right, today we got a synth stacking tutorial. How do we get one melody, let's say, to sound big, huge, and uh, just kind of take up a whole track? Really, you can just have the melody and a, and a beat going, and that's kind of your whole track. Question is, though, how do you get it to sound big? Synth stacking is how you're going to go ahead and do that. Synth stacking is exactly what it sounds like. You take a bunch of synths and you stack them. It's simple in theory, but to get it to sound what we want it to, uh, not as much. It's going to take a little bit more. Uh, my best friend is going to be an EQ. I'll tell you that right now. I'm using Reaper uh, DAW. It's an awesome DAW. Really gets things done. Fully customizable. Uh, I love it. It's a good one. Check it out. Kakos makes it. Um, pretty cheap too. If you're not making too much money. Or if you are making some money. And it should be relatively cheap to how much you're making. Um, but in this tutorial I'm going to show you how we just take one melody line and we're going to go ahead and um, make it make it sound big. Um, at this point I'm going to undo because I already recorded this 10 times today and almost through my computer because nothing seemed to work. So I'm going to take out all these EQs and explain it rather than redo it because if I redo it I, I mean, I'd just take too long and you get the idea. Um, and I might even explain it better since I'm not actually doing it anymore and I can almost reverse engineer my own work. So um, I started with just bringing in a drum beat just so we can hear uh, something play to something because I, you know, just record, uh, you know, a little melody. I ended up recording like a basic kind of pop electro, I don't know typical melody you hear uh, all over the place um, the sound I started with was this one just that um, okay so exactly like it sounds on its own doesn't really do much other than tell you what what notes you're gonna be playing um, pretty puny, uh, not enjoying it, um, so I started with that, and then what you want to do is always add accentuators and noises that are different, so you don't want to add particularly the same exact sounds on top, because then um, you're just adding a bunch of same sounds and just almost turning the volume up, you really want to change the landscape of every element you're adding it's like a you know color board you don't want to put the same color you won't notice the difference you want to contrast a whole bunch of different colors so and you have to separate them too um, that's the art of the EQing so after I started with this sound I went ahead and um, put in this sound Almost like an electric guitar ordeal. What I like about it is the up end grunge. So that's what this EQ is doing. So I'm going to turn it on. Now we're super hollowed out. I mean, you almost don't even hear it. It's really to add. So if we want to look at what I did, here are my things. I, I have a high pass at. 20, 2100 hertz, give or take. Uh, wide, broad strokes, but you know, I have like 6K is like really popping out. Um, and that's the area that I want it to sit on top. And I don't want any of the other information because we have a lot of synths to add and not a lot of room, especially by the end of a whole track. So um, you want to leave a lot of room. After that, um, I ended up adding your atypical pom 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 sound and you flick your hands at it. 
So I added that. But let's bring in the first synth. So now these are the two together. Um, but then let's bring in this pom pom. Um, now I started with this one lower. In the end, it got louder because after I put this EQ on, I'll explain. Really just changed dimensions um, again without bland, no fun. We're starting to get edgy. Um, so, what I did was took out a lot of the lower mids and the higher mids and the highs. I really pumped um, through to let it let it ride on top of kind of what I've already put there. And um, here's a secret. Uh, to adding synth stacking is white noise. When it doesn't sound quite big enough or right, if you're, especially if you're A, B, and uh, commercial tracks out there, probably just need to add more white noise and you'll probably be fine. Um, and that's when I added the white noise. For that, it's kind of dull. And then there it is. But then again, we want to EQ it. So I'm showing you my EQ pattern. A uh, low cut on almost on all the synths really because we don't need particular frequencies except for anything under 40 for these. Um, but this air, I'm like letting sit on top of everything. So with out it, it doesn't have that like crisp sizzle that you hear, and that's what you hear is that crisp up and sizzle. But you have to EQ out every already. And when I made it, I'll show you in silence. I um I band passed it, right? So you can look at my field. It's really simple synth. I have one voice of white noise going. That's it. Stereo it out. Um, really, it's the filter work is all I did. Uh, cut off. Resonance pretty high. Drive at a that sweet spot that silence has. If you know about it. And when you add it in, and then when, then you EQ it too, and really like let it sit on top, let it get some. Because of the band pass, I decided to bring up more. Um, I wouldn't EQ like that. There's just a white noise sample. It's much different. But since it's coming from silence, it's already processed a little bit. Uh, we're good on that. And it sits like right in there a little bit. Um, then. Um, I wanted to put a lead on top of all this, so I added this. Um, again, no EQ, it just kind of attacks on everything. The synths are usually just across the board spectrum wise, so you gotta EQ the hell out of them. Um, so let's turn on this EQ. Yeah, that. All of a sudden, you got this. This sitting low, this sitting above your head, kind of one's almost at your jaw and one's almost at your hair. Um, and you're getting a separation between the synths that almost makes it sound like one sound because people don't, it's, just, it's not bland. It goes like, oh wow, that's amazing. People almost don't even know quite what's going on at that point or how many layers are really in it or not. Um, and if we're talking voices, we're getting up there because some of these have eight times four voices um, so we're banging a lot of synthesizer voices um, and then I wanted to just get something to move the sub a little bit so I got an electro bass and uh, let's check it out it's pretty good without any EQing but I always think some EQing make some room make some room excite some things let's check out Real subtle difference, but I like it. It makes it kind of smooths it out and lets it sit with the rest of the instruments rather than just being there. It's almost all is one. Now, here's something I did duplicate the same exact sound twice. This. Because I actually pan these now left and right. Turn the EQ. Turn the 
EQ on this now. And now when I bring it all in realistically, we got a pretty big sound. Um, let's play it with the drums real quick. starting to get there and um, overall as a starting sound synth I'm pretty happy with that um, if you want to go over this is, uh, and then I actually did some uh, uh, EQing on the bus I made a bus sorry let's go back this is a bus I made of all of these so these are all independently controlled here um, and I put some effects I put a little bit of EQ curves on it Cut out some highs, leave some roof for some high hats. I'm actually gonna dip in a little more. Take out some mid, boost a little, a little higher mid. Compress it a little bit, um, and then this little guy, a little secret to me. Um, it brings things up front real fast. It's made for vocals, but it's a real transparent compressor, and it's a great control sound. Um, to control the sound. So I'm gonna... You know, and I, you can push this thing hard, it's crazy. You know, six, you know, six. And this gate lets me control the, the low tones of it, so, you know, you give it... It's almost how long I want the reverb detail now of all the, the it's cool little Thing after you have all this reverb going, you can kind of control the tails of it with this gate. Um, that's what I like. And it leaves, again, too much reverb will mud your whole mix up. Um, so you don't want too much. And this has plenty of reverb going. So um, let's go over what it sounds like without all the EQs and you'll hear a massive difference. sounds are starting to flatten out to me, is what it sounds like, and losing its dynamic, and now we just have this very amateur sounding mud sound, so let's turn it back on, we start it slowly, getting definition again, this is, to me this is like sculpting, uh, every sound has its place. And now, I mean, just those last two EQs did a huge amount. Um, just these EQs and the compressors you can hear. Uh, my compressor settings here, I'll explain them. Um, attack and release pretty much medium. 22 millisecond, 100 millisecond with 2.8 at about 3 dB of reduction um, just to kind of bring it all together and then this thing I really brought the volume if you don't have this uh, look into saturators and compressors to compensate um, I, this, is, this is a quick way to do it uh, saturate and compress at the same time bring this up a little bit but um, yeah it's pretty much the sound So, in cap, uh, you just keep adding synths and start with one synth, play a melody. Um, might not sound that interesting, but that's the, the art of stacking is you get mad definition between, uh, really with just EQs. I mean, all of that was EQs until the bus, and then I compressed. Uh, in, in my own work, I would spend much more time, and I would uh, probably compress things individually and whatnot, but for the sake of a video to show you. Um, do it quick so that's how you stack synths uh, check out Dutch Records SoundCloud for uh, sweet new music and look out for some more tutorials